Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. Okay, it's day one of Munich High End 2024. It's hard to believe it's been a year since the last show because it feels like it was a week ago, but it was a year ago. This gets more attention than any of the hi-fi. It's the only problem. So this Lamborghini actually has to do with techniques, which is interesting. So there's no turntable in the car, so it's not that. They did not do the sound system for Lamborghini for this car, so it's not that. It's some other connection that we're going to find out about in a few minutes when we have the press. Is there going to be a real press conference? Is that what we're having? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Techniques at High End Show 2024. Needless to say, I'm feeling absolutely excited this morning. Today is a very special day. It's the official announcement of a very, very special collaboration. Collaboration between Techniques and Automobili Lamborghini. So why Automobili Lamborghini? Well, despite of coming of completely different markets, um, both brands have engaged in unique technologies to bring amazingly exciting experiences for their customers. And also common for both brands is the uncompromising will for perfection in terms of manufacturing. But this is about engineering. It's not only about engineering. It's also about emotion. It's about music. And ladies and gentlemen, listening to the fantastic motor sound of this Lamborghini Revuelto, this is an experience you will never forget. The motor sound of this car is not only a motor sound, this is already music. And music, this is the field where Technics is coming from. Technics, since the founding in 1965, has brought amazing musical experiences to their clients. And this collaboration is about the commonality of both brands. Uh, the 1200 series that became legendary because um, many DJs in the world have discovered this perfect tool because of its amazing reliability and uh, it became a de facto standard in millions of clubs all around the world. This turntable will come with a few very special features. First of all, with a very special slip mat with the Automobili Lamborghini uh, label. But then, a fantastic vinyl where the sounds, the driving sounds and the motor sounds of six different classic Lamborghini cars are recorded. At this show, at High in 2024, we will unfortunately not be able to show you the fantastic motor sound of this car, but you can listen to it visiting our sound demonstrations in Atrium 3.1 in room C115, 116 upstairs. Wait, so so you are? I'm David Baker from uh, Origin Live. And is your brother Mark or? Oh, my dad's Mark. Your dad? Yeah, my dad is Mark. I also work with my brother Luke. So Luke is the machinist. I um, actually assemble the turntables. Uh, I do some of our marketing and operations. And then my dad is the uh, crazy inventor, mad genius. Uh, he came up with it. That's right. And, and were you always into vinyl, or was there a period of time when it was the uncoolest thing in the world, and all of a sudden it got cool? For you, you know what? The crazy thing is, I used to go, <laughs> I used to go to school, and I tell my friends, my dad makes the best turntables in the world, which in two thousand in the two thousand three meant absolutely nothing. Right. Everyone was into CD. Okay. Um, but over the years it became a lot cooler. Um, I always, I think I probably discovered my dad's record collection maybe in my early teens. My favourite record was a, a Best of Shirley Massey 
uh, which I still love. Yeah, she's great. She's amazing. Yeah. amazing. What version of Goldfinger rules? Exactly. Goldfinger. Yeah. All right, so show, show me what you got here. So we've got our range of turntables. So starting from our Aurora turntable, which is kind of our entry level. And you can kind of pick this up. It's, our, it's a gimbal bearing design in the tone arm here. Um, and then we just have our kind of standard. So we have a, a decoupling here. So we have a bearing house and our bearing, and then our arm board. And everything on our sub chassis goes through one point. So the only point of connection to the blimp is right here. Um, so if you actually come down, you can see everything, this whole sub-chassis bar balances on this one point, which acts as a ground for the bearing house and the arm board. And uh, the principle, which your audience is probably going to hate this idea, Michael, but the principle is a mechanical diode. So vibrations from the bearing, from the cartridge, tone arm, arm board, are hopefully being kind of angled downwards through Sure, why, would, why would they hate this? Well, people say that it's kind of like a mechanical impossibility, it's a physical impossibility, yeah. but it, it's more that we kind of aim, that's our aim. Yeah. And when we listen to it, it works. When we right. listen to the product of this, as opposed to having everything on one plinth and having all of your reverberations, all of your resonances on one plinth, this sounds way better. It that's what, that's less, what matters. Sounds a lot less murky, sounds a lot more um, detailed, precise, dynamic. And that's because we're, we're trying to handle resonances mechanically instead of kind of whacking everything on one blimp and hoping for the best. Gotcha. So on this we just have our basic platter mat. And then moving up to the swift we have our multi-layer platter. Right, let me just get a shot of this right here. Okay. This brings up the 3650 euro here. Okay. Yeah, and then the difference in the tone arm. On the silver we have a rear stub adds mass to the rear of the arm. Whereas on the onyx it's just a single piece arm tube going all the way back. On the swift this platter, we have a multi-layer platter here. Um, and this is kind of an idea that we developed from our our 50,000 pound deck. Um, the idea is we have one layer on top which has got lots of cutout profiles in it, which again is interrupting resonances traveling around the platter. But it's not quite as kind of brittle as you might see on things like an old Torrens where you have kind of the raised profiles. The profiles here are actually cut into the platter. And then you have a few different layers. So this is the top layer. There's another two layers underneath here in the platter. And the multi-layer technology idea is based on vibrational interference. So you have your your cartridge is resonating on the top of your platter, the bearing is resonating, it's all moving around on the vinyl, so the, vi the vinyl is resonating to some degree. Yeah. Now what we want is we want this layer, this layer, and this layer to all resonate at slightly different frequencies and through the kind of principle of vibrational interference or kind of when you have they various cancel different... They cancel exactly. Each other out. Yeah. exactly. On way more, on, on super decks you might see this done electronically. So kind of um, with a, some kind of piezoelectric or something like that. We try to do this mechanically, um, which obviously also a lot cheaper yeah. it means that we can get Let, that we like to say less expensive not cheaper sorry sorry I mean less expensive okay thank more you. affordable yeah. Yeah. moving up from there we have the resolution um, which is essentially um, you might have noticed a lot of our turntables look quite similar because they're modular which makes um, manufacturing for me uh, slightly simpler but it, it does add every upgrade adds performance what we have added on the resolution is we have firstly the arm board you might notice has this nice large block of a high mass of steel on the arm board. It's also 
across a thick iron board. Um, all of our armboards and blips are made of acrylic, which is obviously quite well known for its resonance match with vinyl itself. Um, and then underneath we have, again, a large um, mass effective block of steel. Um, this, this thing is pretty heavy. I made a few games uh, assembling these. Um, and then we also have mass rings in here, which basically sandwich the extremities of the blimp because it tends, where resonance will kind of um, most kind of reflect and reverberate is often in the corners of blimps. So we not only avoid square blimps, but we also add mass. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that these are all tuned devices. All turntables are tuned devices. Exactly. The resonance and vibration is happening throughout. And what's happening in the groove is a vibration. That you're exactly. Trying, you're, saying you're trying to manage that vibration as being the correct vibration, and the other vibrations you want to get rid of. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then also, you know what? Our company name is Origin Live. We're always, when we're tuning in our research or development, do loads of A-B tests from whether a screw is tight enough or, or not tight enough or whether it's better to go with something like copper or steel. All of that is tuning and you have to listen to yes, those sounds that's right. and, and figure out how they actually sound and affect the music. Because every choice matters and every choice makes the music a difference. That's right. All right. So this is up to 7500 still very reasonably priced, but it's with the arm too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think that is with the encounter included. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the other really crucial thing about all of our turntables is these ultra low friction bearings, which I I put this part of the bearing house in a lathe and I sand it by hand to a very high degree. Um, and what you get with our bearings on many other turntables, I'll just show you. On many other turntables, if you spin the platter, it will probably spin for maybe. 10, 20 seconds, something like that. Now this is a ultra low friction bearing house. I won't quite reveal the secret sauce to your listeners, Michael, I'm sorry. But um, it's a suspended oil bearing. Um, it means that the bearing is floating in oil. And it means that there's very low friction between the bearing and the bearing house. Um, which ultimately will travel upwards into the platter and into your vinyl if you have high friction. Yeah. Now what we're watching, I've spun this up to probably 20 RPM, something like that. What we're watching is this isn't slowing down. And we could stay here for a few minutes and we'll just keep on going. We're not going to do that. So, 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 yeah. Do you ever have to worry that, that the, the platter is going to run away with the the motor, the, the two are not going to be coupled well enough because the thing, is, the thing is so low in friction. That's a good point. With specific belt tension, when you have enough belt tension, um, it, it doesn't really happen. And this arm is called the Renown arm. And what is this? This costs how much? $26,000. Yeah, get up there. So we have two spikes. One spike is going in here, one spike is going down here, made out of um, tungsten, which is an extremely hard material, okay. to sapphire bearing cups. Oh. And obviously with, with um, yeah. you might recognize the kind of principle of a uni pivot, um, but there's instability in the azimuth blades. So, yes. so here we have dual pivot, two spikes, you lose the instability, yeah. Yes. but um, it's also just a much higher performer. the arm tube and then they often reflect on whatever's in the back and they'll travel back down into your cartridge into your stylus sure. muddying the signal this is got multi-layer technology in the counterweight which just helps to diffuse and damp some of that energy that's going to travel back down the arm tube what is this offset weight purpose what's the purpose of that weight now, just being offset i wish i could answer that very well but it's something that um one of our developers tried and it just sounded better oh. because it's all fixed at this point it doesn't affect um, it doesn't actually affect the tracking force too much um, 
I just we just found it. It sounds good. Huh, okay. Just, that's <laughs> that's ultimately what matters, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, and that's all you got to show me. That's enough. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You are Marco Borovac. Yes, I'm Marco I said it right. Okay, good. I'm Marco Borovac or Marco Borovac. Okay. Both is correct. So this is our new brand, Silence. Silence Audio, and this is our new turntable, the Silence Alpha TT1. It's a, as you can see, a high-end finished turntable. There's a lot of technology built into it. We do a lot of things in-house, like the piano lacquer finish, the, the precision sil silicon belts. The electronics is external. We do the full design and assembly in-house. Is it a DC motor? Or no, is AC it's a synchronous AC motor, okay. and we generate the voltages to drive the motor with R2R leather decks, which are actually used for audio. Oh, okay. So we have a three-phase power supply. Uh, this is also quite unique. We have a new registered technology, which is the Magnestat technology. So these are magnetically stabilized unipivots. So with this technology, we basically eliminate most of the problems with unipivot arms. They don't wobble. They allow us to define Mathematically correct geometry on the arm. Okay, and, and that's a carbon fiber tube. It's a carbon fiber tube that's damped with um, with uh, rubber foam on the inside. The wiring is top of the range. So this is a silver plated copper wiring that is used for the tone arm coaxial. Okay. It's Teflon insulation and also on the inside pure copper with Teflon. What is the uh, the basic plinth made out of? What, what is this? The plinth is a Baltic birch plywood, which is impregnated with epoxy resin oh. and finished with piano lacquer. Wow. There are also sand-filled chambers inside to control the resonances, and the top and bottom plate are glued onto the wood to create a sandwich. And what are you selling this for? How much does it cost? So the Introductory retail price is 1,250 euros. Really? Yeah. Have you got an American distributor yet? We are having discussions with a couple of yeah, interested American yeah. distributors. And yes. so once you get this thing on the road, you're going to raise the price somewhat. I guess you have to. Uh, the, the plan is to hold the price for one year at this level because we're a new brand and we want to penetrate the market as much as possible. So. After this one year, we're going to introduce new models. We plan to have three ranges of turntables, the Alpha, the Beta and the Omega, ranging from 600 euros to 100 plus thousand phone where, stages. Where are these manufactured? In Croatia. Oh, Croatia. Yeah, everything is done in-house. Right, thank you, Mark. What's the platter made out of, by the way? The platter is full aluminium. Oh, okay. And it's uh, 19 millimeter thick and it's balanced. So the bearing is also quite unique. Um, at this price range, I mean. So it is an uh, inverted 10 millimeter steel bearing with um, oil well. It's a hydrodynamic bearing with a hard contact point at the top. You're giving a lot of value for very little money. That's oh, yeah. Phenomenal. We, we are a new brand and we have to somehow show our worth. Do you pay the, peop the, the people that assemble these? Do you pay them any money to work on it? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a bad man. Okay. They have enough just to come to work and go back home. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the unique power supply that we give um, with the turntable. It has these three ladder decks. So these are audio decks that are used to generate our voltages for the motor. Three-phase motor, yeah. yeah. So we use push-pull amplifiers AB class to drive the motors. Wow. And this is a cogless, slotless, synchronous very smooth synchronous motor. Wow. Yeah. I want to get one of these to review. Yes, please. Can swing that, make that happen. As soon as it's available in the States, okay. uh, we'll be happy to send you one. I would ha be happy to review it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So this looks great. Thank Cheers. you so much. Okay. Cheers. All right.
Revelation series two. We're using the Revelation three now, along with the Revelation funnel stage. The turntable is from EAT. This is the EAT Fortissimo S with the JOS eight cartridges on it. Amplification is the Revelation series two stereo amplifier, which is providing 250 watts per channel into the new Wilson Sasha V loudspeakers. All of the cabling from the source to the amplifier is from our friends at Transparent Audio. The power conditioning and power cables are all from Shinyata Research there. And of course, we've got some uh, steel points traps around the room to help, you know, this, this is a convention center. It's not a hotel room, it's not a listening room. So we're trying to make the listening experience as pleasant as possible for you. So we play all kinds of different music. Luke is playing some turn, a turntable right now. He's going to play with a Cassidy. Just a little color. This is Peter Peter McGrath, Peter McGrath in, in action. Hi Peter. So this is the new, like this is like retro what, puppy This is kinda? essentially the 50th anniversary celebration speaker that will continue on after this year. But it's called the Watt Puppy. It has almost exactly the same footprint as did the original Watt Puppy. And what we have it posed next to is a Watt Puppy 5, which is a very popular, you know, for many people it's the start of their journey on high-end audio. Sure. And uh, this is sort of a reminiscent of that. It's the old combined with the new, because all of the technology, and this is our current technology, the carbon uh, tweeter, the Al Nico magnet mid-range, and the same woofer drivers that are in the Sasha V, all of the capacitors in the crossover are in-house made, all of the internal wiring, all, and so it's fully up to date with all of the technology that we use. The entire low frequency enclosure is made out of X material with V material on the critical surfaces. The, the top module is adjustable in the time domain because the spike in the back is adjustable so that you can do a nominal amount of time alignment, which you, we didn't do, we weren't doing that back then. Right, yep. But that's now incorporated into this design. And this little thing here will only be on the one sold this year. Wow. And then, because it has a 50th anniversary plaque on it. And, and this is a matte finish on this one? This is uh, a matte finish. Yeah, I can't remember the color name. Well, what is this going to sell for? Uh, 38500 a pair. And what's interesting, Mikey, that if you go back to what the retail of this was, in its dollars back then, today would be 42000 Oh, so it's actually less expensive. A, in a way, it is. Yeah. 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 And you know what's interesting is that as old as this is, we have every part needed to make it in inventory, yep. work it, fabricate. Which is important. We, we'll, if you have one like this and you don't, it doesn't look like this, you can make it look like this. Yep. We'll do that for you. So that's still a service. That's thing. important. Yeah. So this is Mr. Dan D'Agostino doing the talking, and uh, and he has a new integrated amplifier that yep. they're releasing at this show. Yes. Okay. It's called the Pendulum. Um, probably shipping in. September. Uh, it's 120 watts into 8, 240 into 4. It comes with phono, streamer, and DAC at that price. Wow. M -M and MC both? No, just MC. Just, just MC? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Sound any good? It sounds really good. Is it playing with, with the little tune tots? Yeah. Yes, sir. You need to take a look. Oh, boy. <laughs> Which one is this? This is the 99. It's from Japan. 
Phoenix one time. Oh, oh, I reviewed that. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. That's a wonderful. They, just, they you... just introduced EX2000, Diamond Country Level. Hey. Hey is, for, hey is for horses. Hi, Julie. How are you, How are you doing? Good to see you. Just deep. look at this. This is yeah. took everyone by surprise with this. It's uh yeah. You know what the big surprise is that I've known about it and I didn't tell everyone. <laughs> That's that is amazing. That is amazing. That is beyond amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know the basics, the the motor design and the platter bearing design are things that Helm would have done before. But the industrial design, the chassis design. Um, the motor control are completely different. This is, the power supply is completely different. Um, and the tone arms are now, and the cartridge, they worked with uh, Aarhus Technical Institute in Denmark to have the tone arms and cartridge actually diamond coated. So the cartridge starts out life as an Ortofon MC diamond, but they do two things. They diamond coat the body, it's a titanium body, but then also the compliance of the cartridge is precisely matched to this tone arm. So the tone arm, the turntable, and the cartridge, and this is, I believe, unique, you would know. This is the only product I know that's designed as a system. The entire thing, including... There's another one, but that's okay. Okay, this is... <laughs> there is. Okay, who? Uh, the the uh, Wilson Batter shows. Oh, okay. But this, this is a good way to do it. Yeah, it is. This is I mean, not meant for you, tweakers. This is a system you, you buy this and you for, play it. It's meant for honestly. It's meant for a rich person who's yes. going to buy the new Siren Phono section. That's um, this piece right here. Yep. It's a two piece. Two piece. Oh, that's big. Yep. It's like a bikini. It's a two piece. Yeah, two piece. And. Um, you know, we have these very small amps, which is why we have to keep <laughs> opening the door to the room. So these are um, right. this you know, 250 watts, uh, 225 watts pure class. Is this the one that I reviewed? Well, you reviewed a stereo. The stereo. Version. This right. is a mono. Right. Yeah. And these are the new EOS 5 speakers. In this is a stealth finish. So supposedly the speaker can if you might it, it flies over it flies my, over the rose bowl no, no but supposedly you can heal minor scratches you can put a piece of paper over it and a, and a warm iron so if you scratch it it's actually a self-healing pain finish and i am now are you kidding going to wow, demonstrate that yeah. are you being serious <laughs> it's like the vacuum cleaner salesman and it is yes Abbott <laughs> costello remember that oh, yes and, and they had to eat the dirt right no, but actually, no, but it is a stealth finish. It's the first time it's ever been used in an audio product. Wow. And so what is this turntable yeah. going to sell for? Yeah, with everything, with an arm talking. and a cartridge and... The, but wait, there's more. But wait, the there's more. Is, if you buy now... It's we'll going to be one, 148 U.S. 148 okay. U.S. For one cartridge and... and one, one cartridge, arm. one arm. Okay. And you can get whatever other arms you want, and the arms will be available separately. I believe we have a price. We have a price you so buy the two. door. So you can put a different brand arm on the back if you oh, want. Absolutely. Yeah, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, it's 20, and the cartridge is 20,000 US. And the arm would be around 12. The arm is going to be around 12,000 US. Euro. Euro. Okay. So, they're sep so they're available separately? The separate yes, products. I mean, it's all available separately, but except if you buy the turntable, you got to have it with the tone arm I cartridge, because it really is okay. not system. optimal. And what is the Fono preamp going to sell for? What is it? Uh, 53, 58? With the power supply. Does this play? It does play. Are we Runa, play? Our lovely assistant, Runa, who's actually the boss, our lovely boss, Runa, is actually going to play this. Because I have a record. I have, I have the... I okay, have. I'm sure you do. You have only one? I only brought it... Well, they're all over in another room, but I brought uh, just a couple of records. You brought a Kato Kalen? I brought that, but I also brought uh, the uh, Patrick Leonard record. Oh, cool! Fantastic. That would on this system, I think, it would be fantastic. So this year we have uh, a new prototype amplifier, monoblock amplifiers, full tube, single ended, parallel single ended, 80 watts per monoblock. Uh, then we have uh, the new version of the Phono Stage, the VPS 100 oh. MK2. It uses different tubes uh, with the original, uh, updated power supply with newer uh, capacitors, newer technology capacitors. Um, and then we have a new CD player. That your son designed? Yes, wow. completely. <laughs> uh, wow. 
Wow. He wrote the code for everything, controlling the mechanism, really? the DAC, everything. How proud are you? A lot. <laughs> sure, I'm sure. Um, we have uh, the silver edition of the preamplifier, uh, the PST100 MK2 SC. Uh, we just have a new display, which also my son wrote the code for it. Um, it's a nicer look, it's a much more easy to read and nicer yes, look. Yes, yes, yeah. and uh, the user can uh, change the color of the characters and the color of the background. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, Drive these full range uh, easily. These are 92, the new Kaiser speakers, uh, 92 dB efficient, 4 ohms. Uh, in the show, we are playing, uh, we are by amping them with Aelius on the lows. Ah. And then we have uh, the DAC 1000 SC. Below is the server with the CD external power, power supply. Ah. And this is the new version of the phono stage and the preamp. And here we have the Tech Dash Air Force One Premium with their uh, the new, new arm. arm. Yeah. I, yeah. Just, I interviewed those guys. Yeah. All right, so we're with, we're with the. Uh, I will call them the Kingston Trio here, the, the TechDOS gentlemen who have just developed the new TechDOS arm, and you're showing it here. Last year you showed a, a pre-production version of it, and this year you got the finished version. So what's new in the finished version? Um, so um, all the cosmetics are refined. We have the scales for the um, tracking force adjustment and the anti-force, um, uh, anti-skating adjustment. And we also have the 12 inch, um, the, the long um, pipe version. And that's on the back of the table? Yes, okay. it will be on the back of the Air Force One Premium. And you, do you have the same cartridge on both of them? Yes, the, the new um, TDC-01 DIA cartridge. The, um, diamond cantilever and um, it's a pipe and tapered pipe cantilever. And so if the same cartridge is on both uh, arms, when you when you play a record on both arms, do you hear a difference between the 12 inch and the 9 inch arm? 12 and 10, yes, that's interesting. 10 inch to 10 inch de ma onnaji cartridge o tsukete de oto no chigai it teu no doi o shinichi no yatsuri so um, in the 12 inch, um, we, we, we can enjoy a more relaxed, um, more relaxed sound. That's maybe because of the difference of the mass of the tube. I think it tracks better. Tracking Yes, the, the but they both sound good, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And have you established a final price for the arm? Yes, we have. Yes. Um, like in America, what, what's it going to cost in America? In America, I believe. Um, well, Matt Meyer, Shadi, um, he has the correct, the, the precise. So maybe forty-five thousand for the ten inch. 50,000 for the 12 inch, but maybe you should check. The approximate price. Yes. Like we're not, not going to hold you to the price. Okay. Okay. Yes. And that's it? That's all you got? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, great. Thank you, guys. And this one. So, Luke, what do you got here? We, uh, these are the, basically the Mini-Me. Now, there's an 8-tube version of the Siegfried or 
an MB450, which you know well, yeah. uh, with the power, the reference power supply. Um, we took four inches off the top of the Siegfried, and you see the size of it in there on the S400. Yeah. And I think what made the difference is the uh, the five and a half inch less depth, you know, shallower front to back. Yeah. And then adding the uh, view, the window so you can see the tubes, I think is really cool. That's half the battle with tubes, to see them. You want to see the tubes. Yeah, yeah, you want to see. Of course, with the light reflector, we're not going to see the tubes on the video. <laughs> Wait, it looks like you're in jail. It looks like we're in a jail cell, but that's okay. We, I understand the tubes. Yeah. Are there. Okay. So it has uh, three layers of fault sensing. It has all of the power supply capability of the Siegfried and, and reference for uh, S400. But the idea was to hit the sound of the S400, you know, because it's got a special sound. Yeah. That the Siegfried, it has this fluidity, and we wanted to see if that was our target. Yeah. And so Sonic. when is this going to go into production? This year, um, probably, I have to have it in August, probably, for the show in Hong Kong, I would guess. And what do you expect it to sell for? About 70K a pair, 70, 75K. I in the US? Good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In Europe? Okay. VAT and all this stuff. And that's, that's all. Yeah, that's all you got new, new here to show me. Yeah, that's all. That's for right now. That's good. That, that's, <laughs> right now. That's a major thing. Well, you know, I'd like to do a big phono stage. I'd like to, but but vinyl's dead. I know. We, uh, we know it's, that. It's, 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 I gotta finish this first. I think. Yeah, one thing at a time, right? Yeah, for yeah. me. I've been working on this for like three or four years oh, already. Wow. Yeah, get it done already. Get well, done already. yeah, I, I had to do the software, which is basically the Siegfried has two auto bias boards, so it's yeah. two chips and a master chip. And this is one chip driving uh, one chip in the auto bias, but it also has the third layer of fault sensing that the four, MB450 has that yeah. the Siegfried doesn't have. So that was additional uh, engineering yeah. and then the software for that. Once we got the software down, then it was time to build a proto, which we have a pair. Yeah. We played them last year, and we'll have this to listen to. Um, but uh, the uh, the next thing was to get the face panel. And if I told you I got this last week, I wouldn't be lying. Wow. <laughs> I built okay. it on Friday. Well, you got and it in time. Got on a plane. You got it in time. <laughs> in time. That's all that matters. It's called just in time, okay. buddy. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is not the turntable I had in my house. No, this is the uh, Prime Meridian, which is the next level down. It's got the key components of the GMT-1, but in a reduced package, which is basically slightly different finishes. As you can see, this is a, a natural titanium finish on the turn arm rather than the gold that right. was in the original review. And the other key difference is the suspension system. So in this suspension system, this is, a, this is decoupled by a rubber isolation system in the main system. And then there are also these uh, pads which are on both sides of this, what we call a tessellate dam damping system. Sorry, a fractal damping system. Okay. So inside these cases, instead of the pneumatic systems, we have now got uh, uh, systems based on fractal damping. Okay, but the, the alpha drive is is the same. Alpha drive is exactly the same. The Amiga drive is identical. There's no difference whatsoever. And in fact, everything is machined and ready to upgrade should you wish to go to a pneumatic system. Oh. So like all the uh, systems that we are going to create in this range, they're all modular and can therefore be upgraded and built upon all the time. Which is good, good to know, so people can start with this and, and, and go and to go the top. Up. And there'll, there'll be more models below yeah. as, as well, which uh, will feature those the also exactly the same component. And will those also be upgradable all the way all, to the top? All of them are all oh. designed to do that. 
That's that's great. And so yes. and so, what do you see this as costing? This is two seventy U.S. dollars. So that's that's a hundred thousand dollars less. That's a considerable amount. It's not less. inconsiderable. Yeah. Yeah. But you only get one tone arm, one cartridge with this. Right. But in, essentially, it's a full blown system of it. Yeah. And then you could add another arm and. You, you can add the arms. Yeah. We, all, all the all the pricing on the arms and cartridges are all in the price list now, so you can right. get a, as many arms as you want to add to the system. I so like essentially, it's, this is no difference. Uh, there's no difference in this arm from the one that you reviewed, right? Uh, other than the fact that this one isn't titanium nitride coated. Right. So when it looks like gold, it, it isn't in fact gold. It's titanium nitride. Right. Well, that's. that's uh, Good news for a lot of people, or for some few people. I, I think it's <laughs> a few more people. Did you buy the response to the to what you've been doing on tracking angle? I think it's a lot of people are really interested in what's going on. They here, hear so. it. I know that's what's amazing because it's it's an MP, it's basically MP3, but it's better than the lowest quality MP3. But you can still hear what it's that, doing. That is coming through in the comments. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. And the I think we're at 107,000 views now. Is it? It's, it I, know, I haven't looked. <laughs> I look at it every five minutes. And there's no resentment. There's very little resentment. You know, there's very little resentment. No, this, the comments are all, overall, I think, are nice. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. good. Oh, so this is, this is good news. Okay. And of course, this, this is, uh, the stage one is now uh, capable of going uh, direct out as well as uh, option. Uh, oh, good. So, the so it's called the stage one. Step up, yeah. And what does stage three concepts mean? They're the cables that come from oh. Brian uh, oh. in the USA. Okay. And um, we're also partnering <coughs> with Ypsilon, of course. Right, of course. Okay, well, great. This is very good news. It sounded good. <laughs> I'd hope it would sound good, and it did. We Okay, so, so this is a new arm from J. Sakura. Yeah. It's the product that actually closes the gap in a family of J. Sakura tone arms. It's a KV9. So far we had KV12 tone arm. Uh, afterwards, we released KV Max line of 9 and 12 inch tone arms. And now we are closing uh, this line with a KV9, which is a uh, cheapest on them of our family. We say least expensive. We least expensive, cheap. yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah, very important. It's at least expensive. The date can be cheap. It's uh, you know, not on the level of 4,200 uh, euros. Oh. So you'll, you'll like 10,000 10, euros. 10,000 euros. You'll jack it. Now, what do you think this is going to be? I, I, I haven't seen it. This is all new to me. Yeah. Yeah. It will be higher than the European. Yeah. It just has to be. It's a premiere here. Yeah. As you see, it's the uh, same construction as you already know. It's a yes. unique pivot. It's, uh, the housing is actually, and all the elements inside of the bearing are uh, from the KV-12. Uh, although the size itself uh, is smaller and it's uh, from the Max line version. Yeah. Yeah, but it, comparing this one uh, that looks identical to the KV-9 Max, you, there is no zirconium, bearing, uh, zirconium oxide bearing and the elements of bronze are replaced with the aluminium back again here, as in a regular KV-12. To bring the cost, cost down. Yes, to bring the cost down. Yeah. It gives us okay. the opportunity to put an arm on the appropriate table, you know, right. try, try to match that way. Is this the appropriate table for it? Every table is appropriate yeah. for and which it. One, which table is this? Sorry, this is this the is Jessica initial table in a actually max version because it has a second uh, motor here. Okay. So. But full, complete Max version would also include a second uh, base for the second tone arm and the extra plint. Here there is only uh, extra motor added, which also shows you how you can you know, go up from the very uh, basic line of sure. initial and, and, and proceed with upgrading uh, with each right. uh, other um, elements. And that's it? That's all? Yeah, that's all. That's enough. And okay. the cartridge is ah. from, from our partner uh, Adis in right. Lithuania. That's yeah. a, uh, the Mammoth two, Mammoth Tusk cartridge, uh, made out of true woolly Mammoth Tusk. Amazing. That gold wire. 
Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> okay, and that's it? If they brush their teeth better, they'd stay on. <laughs> oh, it makes noise too. Oh, no. Okay, and that's it. This is the eye candy part. Yes, it is. So we start off the, the copper series. Yep. Um, then we go into the silver plated copper wiring, gold plated copper wiring, and pure gold. Uh, similar to what Wetz was done, they also mix and match different bodies of wood and uh, precious stones to you know, have different sound characteristics. Yeah. How, could, do you know all the different sound characteristics of each of these cartridges? That you I've not heard every single one because it was about 12 or 13, but okay. I do know most of them. Okay, so how would you describe the differences? The copper series in the wood is a little richer sounding. The most dynamic to me and the most detailed is the silver in the malachite, the green malachite. Okay. Um, as you're moving up to the, the gold series, uh, in particular, I like the black web one that gets very interesting. Get the gold over it gives you a little bit more warmth uh, over the copper. And then the pure gold, it just gives a very relaxed presentation, very elegant without getting bloated in the base. Yeah. And then the Mammoth is the special edition series, and they have done Tibetan yak and all sorts of interesting things. So, more to come always. Okay, interesting. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Michael. Okay. But this torch that I found, it's gotta be drowned. Or it's gonna explode. Make it one more. So this is uh, what we are presenting here is a special edition uh, of the Standard Max Supreme turntable. Uh, it was built for the special occasion of the 15th anniversary of JC Cora and it uh, recreates original initial ideas of how would standard max supposed to be a look like by my father in his intentions when he was building this table 15 years ago 15 uh, 15 15 15 15, 15. 15. Yes, 15. wait a second 50 years ago no, 15 years ago 15 okay so it's a combination it's a table that you already know it's a standard max yeah. version but in a special edition where the most of elements, aluminum elements, were replaced with uh, uh, brass elements, and also a new combination of these special metals and aisles were, were, were recreated, like I said, from initial uh, idea and the project of how this table was supposed to look like 15 years ago. Uh, it was originally presented at the Expona uh, in the same combination with the KB12 Max tone arm and Aida's Mammoth Gold cartridge. Uh, What's so special about it? It's a new color, which is a white pearl. We offer this table in a high gloss and white pearl, uh, as you see. First 15 units, because of this special occasion, the 15th anniversary, uh, will be numbered. And uh, this is number two. Oh. Yes, this is number two. The first one is already in America, this guy. It's at my house. Yeah, it's <laughs> in your house. <laughs> one. Okay. So the 15 more will be numbered. Afterwards, this will stay in our portfolio. It fills the gap perfectly between the reference and the standard max and offers actually in a size and in a you know, compact size of the standard max offers the quality of, luxury quality of materials and the sonic performance yep. of reference. People are still playing records, is that what you're saying? It's never yeah. gonna take off. <laughs> it won't work. Okay. I think one of Robert's a uh, little being modest, but another important thing this turntable is, like you said, it's an homage to what his father designed and the combination of metals, but it's one of the first times that Robert has moved forward and been an integral part and led some of the design work on this table, so it's really nice. It's a true family business.